Good afternoon. The uh, Oklahoma City Water Utilities Trust uh, for April the 6th will be in order. The first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the March 16th meet meeting. Move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Other comments, questions, additions, corrections? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The minutes are approved. The next item is a consent docket. Number of matters. Move consent docket subject to individual consideration. Second. A motion and a second to approve the consent docket. Are there matters to be in, uh, considered individually? None. Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, the consent docket's approved. Next item is item four. It's an emergency uh, construction contract on a project of Northeast 23rd and Hiawassee. Move approval. Second. Have a motion and a second to approve our comments. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we had a, a fire at our very small uh, Dungee wastewater treatment plant that's operated and maintained by city staff. Um, the, the building that staff uses to run laboratory samples while at the plant and do the control of kinds of testing that are necessary um, was damaged in a fire. It is being repaired. It's back in essentially usable condition. And thank you very much for considering the emergency. Okay. Any other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of item four? Aye. 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 Opposed? Item four is approved. Item 5, a uh, series of temporary and permanent easements. 5A is one at 149th uh, to 164th in Portland. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second to approve item four, 5A. Comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Item 5A is approved. Item 5B is 24-inch water transmission main extension to Sarah Road and Reno. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second to approve item 5B. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 5B is approved. We're, we're going to get this meeting over really quick. We need to get Eric Grove in here so we can try to make this thing last till 3 o'clock. Be careful what you ask for, Mr. <laughs> the, next, the next item is item 5C. It's a, a renewal of, of a grant of easements. Uh, from the United States and uh, specifically the BIA. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second to approve item 5C. Comments, questions? Mr. Chairman, that leaves us with just one easement remaining in the Atoka Pipeline renewals. Okay. Any other any comments, questions? Is this another time limited easement 50 years or is it, or is it a permanent? These are 50 year term easements as well. well. Other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, 5C is approved. Next item is item 6 status report on the commercial paper program. Mr. Chairman, uh, Dennis Whaley and Colby Eccles are here from PFM to give you an update on our commercial paper program. And I promise I can go faster than. <laughs> you watched some of that this morning. Yes, sir. I mm. um, wanted to give you all a brief presentation about the status of the commercial paper program. Uh, on page two, uh, we have a list, just an overview of some of the participants in the program. I think the key thing to know about, know on this page, is the current letter of credit expires July 30th of 2010 which is something we're going to talk about. Page three just gives you an update on market rates. Short-term rates remain, remain very low, and long-term rates have stabilized, although we've seen um, a steepening of the yield curve, which you will see on the next page. Uh, Short-term rates where the Fed uh, has a big impact on the market uh, remain very low. Longer-term rates, which are more market-driven, you see that uh, rates have moved up since last September. 
Page five shows you the current commercial paper outstanding and the rates you're paying. You're currently paying between 0.2% and 0.3% for your money. So uh, I think the commercial paper program has worked very well for you to borrow as needed. And uh, just a comparison of uh, J.P. Morgan uh, over the life between J.P. Morgan and Lehman before them, the weighted average rate has been 1.7 per 6%. SIFMA is 1.96%. So we would say that your broker-dealers have done a good job of placing your paper at appropriate rates. Page 6, a little history. The trustees approved a one-year letter of credit last June. Once again, the letter expires July 30th. Um, we need to either renew or solicit um, for a new letter of credit. And at the same time as we uh, authorize the new letter of credit, we want to uh, update the program documents. So on page 7, I, I want to walk through the three authorizing uh, rules we have to follow. On July 8th, which is July 18th, when the initial program uh, came, came to be, uh, we authorized $300 million in borrowing total for the, for the program. The second limitation we have is our letter of credit with uh, State Street limits us to $125 million outstanding at any one time. The third thing that's uh, a rule we have to abide by is a state procurement law that not only the paper you have outstanding, but also the, pro the CIP projects that you plan to uh, support with commercial paper, once they're approved, those two amounts go together to make up the $125 million because you can't approve a, the funding for a program without having a place to get the funding from. So page 8, we walked through these three authorizations just to make sure that we could show you that everything is in compliance, and I'm glad to say we are. Uh, the first one, the $300 million limit, we still have $213 million remaining that we could issue. The letter of credit, $125 million, you currently have $12.5 million, or as of this report, it was $12.5 million. I believe it's $13.5 now. $13.5 million now, so we're in compliance. And the procurement law requirement, uh, $125 million, 12 and a half outstanding. And then projects that you've allocated to commercial paper but you haven't funded through the program yet, a little over $31 million. So we're in compliance with all three of these requirements. Uh, some things you you've see in the past, uh, the, the project allocation on page 9. And then on page 10, just a little summary of the program. Uh, I think it's been an excellent financing tool for Aquit. Um, rates are very low. Uh, we're, you know, we can't expect this forever, but we might as well enjoy it while we can. Um, and we don't, when we issue commercial paper for projects, we don't have to have a reserve fund, and the coverage requirement is one time. So it's, it's in your best interest to borrow through the program, then roll it along when you've, when you've built up uh, your capacity. The last three pages uh, just talk about bond insurance companies. Nothing's really changed there. Most of them are not in very good shape. Um, your long-term bonds outstanding graphically, and then um, a debt service schedule for, uh, for your long-term bonds outstanding. As far as the renewal, uh, I've begun to make some phone calls about re renewal rates with State Street and talk to some other banks. and. Um, Hope to have all my information pulled together in the next week or so and be ready to report and let you all move forward with that. So I would be happy to answer any questions. Do you have any indication whether State Street would be interested in rolling over that line of credit? Interested in continuing? Yeah. Yes, they're very much interested. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Who will receive the report? Okay. Second. Motion and a second to receive the report. Thank you. Appreciate your comments. Um, are there any other questions or comments? 
Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Reports received. Next item is item 7. Items have to be considered individually. The first one, item 7A, is a resolution approving and authorizing a clean water state revolving fund loan in the aggregate amount of $35 million. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second to approve. Could we have a brief description of the process of what we're doing here? Yes, with, with some help. The, let me begin by introducing the topic. The federal government through the state of Oklahoma's Oklahoma Water Resources Board operates a state revolving loan fund program for, for um, loans for water and sewer improvements. The uh, clean water is the wastewater side of the house, drinking water the drinking water side of the house. The, you have before you two, two items, 7A and 7B, that address the clean water and drinking water loan program. This is a request to put us in line to borrow money through those programs because we believe that the federal government will uh, include grants in the budget, monies that, that help decrease our total cost by, by including federal funds in a capital project. We've identified over $30 million worth of projects um, that might be in those loan programs. A follow -up question. Excuse me, a follow-up question. Are we actually getting the money or is this an application for the loan? The last meeting we had an application. This is to adopt the legal resolutions under state law that we have to adopt in order to, uh, for you to act that then authorizes us to proceed with the program. Okay. But we're still an applicant at this point. We're not a recipient. We're not, we're not a recipient until we, uh, start awarding these projects under this resolution. Have we received the $35 million from the state yet? N no. No, it's okay. So we're not a recipient yet. Right. And we, in my sort of uh, weak terminology, we, get, we, be, we will be a recipient when we get $35 million from the state. Okay. They, the way that we're currently working the program with the current projects under SRF is similar to what we're doing with commercial paper. We pay the claims through the state process with SRF and receive stipends at those amounts as we pay the claims, just like we do with commercial paper. They have a temporary borrowing program through SRF that then converts to permanent financing like we do with our other programs. So if we award a project on this list, then uh, we would do so under the funding authority of this resolution. <clears throat> I think I understand. We okay. established a, a fund up there and we're drawing it down piece yes. at a time. And we are entitled to that $35 million right. by virtue of the fact that the state's got the money right. and they've approved us to do that. And, and, then, and then the other part of this is, is that uh, with the SRF funds, we don't have a debt service reserve fund that we have to fund. So that saves us about 10% of the amount we would borrow for each of these projects. And at what point in the program do we start paying the money back? When we turn it into permanent financing. financing. Further questions? All those in favor of item 7A say aye. 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 Post. <clears throat> item 7A is approved. Item 7B is a companion item. Um, Move approval. Second. Motion and a second to approve item 7B. Other comments on it? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Post. 7B is approved. Um, item 7C, accept the Lake Draper wetland enhancement project. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second to uh, approve item 7B, or F7C, excuse me. Comments? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this closes out the very successful planting program that we had at Lake Draper. We feel that it's time to close the program because there's not a lot we can do until we bring the water level back up at, at Lake Draper, and that's going to be about 18 months. So. 
we think it's been very successful. We're really pleased with what we've learned and the help that the OWRB staff was able to give us to teach us about, about this and physically do the plan in many cases. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve, to accept. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item 7D, uh, adopt a resolution ratifying the action of general manager uh, f with regard to water rights at Lake Sardis. Move the item. Second. Motion and a second to approve item 7D. Comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7D is approved. 7E, application for a permit a commercial fitness boot camp at Couple of places, I guess, at Mo Hefner. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second to approve item 7E. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7E is approved. Uh, item 7F is to, uh, approval of utility relocation agreements with ODOT. Move approval. Second. I guess they have to be done separately. The first one is item 7F1. Seven, uh, seven Are there comments? Hearing none, all those in favor of item 7F1 say aye. 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 Opposed? 7F1 is approved. Now set them F2. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second to approve 7F2. Comments? Questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7F2 is approved. 7F3. Move approval. Second. A motion and a second to approve item 7F3. Comments? Question? All those in favor say aye. Aye. 7F3 is approved. G, pipeline crossing permit between the city, uh, the, the Water Trust, and Trans Canadian Keystone Pipeline. Move approval. Second. Seems like they lost their way if they were going across Canada and have a blind in <laughs> Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> Have a motion and a second to approve item G. Other comments, questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? G is approved. H, approve the fourth amendment to the amendment and restatement of the lease between uh, Verizon, um, Cox, Cell Tower, I two near uh, Douglas Boulevard and I-240 at the Lake Draper Reservation. Move okay. approval. Second. A motion and a second to approve item 7H. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, aye. Accept a quick claim deed and a permanent easement from Premier Hospitality for a project near Southwest 15th and Meridian. Move Move approval. Item. Have a motion and a second aye. to approve aye. Other comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Item I is approved. Item J is a request uh, to reconsider an application for an oversized main extension policy A. Mr. Edwards is here to speak about this. Um, Mr. Edwards, if you want to come to the microphone, go ahead and give you a chance to talk about it. Uh, the only thing I have to add from the uh, last month's meeting is I'm handing out the same report that I had. I made some footnotes on there on the monthly average water bill from South Ridge Apartments, which was their average water bills is about $5,500 a month. And uh, they had tied into this oversized water line twice. And in approximately a 12-year period that, uh, that I've involved this water line, the their amount they had paid to Oklahoma City is $792,000. And going forth, for each decade thereafter is going to be about 660000 So I'd just like to point that out for your consideration as you look for payment for that oversized new water line. Thank you. Comments? Somebody, somebody on staff could just kind of go back over where we are on this and, and why it's our position that uh, we should not reimburse it. 
Mr. Chairman, trustees, uh, Mr. Edwards uh, constructed his oversized line back in 1999. At that time, we had policy A in effect, which was adopted in 1977. Policy A1 was not in effect at that time. It had not been created. In 2004, Mr. Edwards came with a belated application requesting reimbursement under policy A1, which I believe was created in 2001. Uh, and uh, requested uh, compensation for the oversizing of the main above and beyond the 12-inch uh, <coughs> requirement that's in the pedometer report. Uh, at that time, it was heard by the trustees, and the trustees voted two to two on the issue, and therefore it was not approved. The, uh, Mr. Edwards has returned to ask it to be reconsidered since the last vote was tied. The uh, concerns of legal counsel are that uh, there was a policy and a procedure in place for a written application prior to construction of the line, which was not followed, that there was a procedure in place for reimbursement under policy A, and that was not followed. Uh, he is looking for uh, the nature of a reimbursement, which would be under a policy A1, had that been in place at the time, and had there been appropriate application and process followed, and that uh, payment back retroactively could cause some legal concerns with regard to other uh, developers who went ahead and put in uh, oversized lines at their own option, similar to Mr. Edwards, who were not reimbursed, who subsequently come forward for reimbursement. Do we have a sense as to the magnitude of the potential liability? No, I do not, sir. Okay. Is there a way we can assess the magnitude of it? Have any mechanism that we can look at? Policy A required that the city bid the line um, in 2002, I think it was. No, my fault. Um, we added Policy A1 so that we could direct pay at three dollars an inch diameter foot. I, I can tell you that in 1999 we were paying for sewer at $2 an inch diameter foot. Um, again, for, for projects that came through the process, uh, I can tell you that if we had paid for the oversize uh, consistent with the current policy A, we'd have paid the $11,520 that's, that's described in your memo. I, unfortunately, we don't have the detailed documents uh, for it for a public bid, that simply wasn't the process. Um, the and, and competitive bidding is a significant part of the issue. Well, the, the problem I have with this is that as a former utilities director, I dealt with dozens and dozens of engineers and developers that came in and made a decision whether they were going to go forward with policy A or choose not to go forward with policy A as, as it was. And I, you know wasn't director after 2000, but at that time, they, they made the decision, and sometimes even though there was some money that they could recoup on, uh, mm -hmm. potentially, out of policy A, they made the decision not to go forward because they didn't like the competitive bidding aspect of it. They thought they could go cut a, you know, they had a, a, a contractor that they had a, a good relationship with, they thought they could go, you know, whatever they, they thought they, they, they could do, doing some other work, and they could get a better value because they were combining it with on-site utilities on the job or whatever the case may be, they made a decision that now we're not going to do the policy A, it's not worth the time, you, when I do the present value of the money that's over all those years, having to go and, and, and competitively bid the project, it's just not worth it. And so they made that decision, they go build the, the line on their own and, and, and we get on, on with life. And now coming back after the fact, well, there were a number of those that, that, that had that same option and the decision was made when they chose the method to, build, to construct that, whether it was competitively bid or not. And uh, I, I don't know, that's, that's problematic for me anyway, is, is, is that hurdle, because I know of all the other developers and engineers that make those, have, have made those decisions and lived with that decision, whatever they chose to decide at that time. Well, I, my concern is, is the potential of creating additional claims and not being able to quantify it. And, and I understand the confusion that may have existed at the time, but um, 
if we were to approve this, there's nothing to stop other developers from coming back in and saying, oh, by the way, I'm eligible there. And, and there is a, to me, there, there, there is a, a, a question of uh, creating more work and creating opportunities for folks who to take advantage of a system you know, that, quite frankly, they shouldn't be able to because they made a decision and went on. I probably shouldn't open, ask this question in open meeting, but Craig, would we be exposing ourselves to potential a ratepayer's lawsuit by paying something that was outside of, uh, of, of the policies in place at the time? Payment of this request would put us in, in danger of being sued uh, for recovery of these monies. It's a difficult situation, but uh, I, I think we need to be we're charged with being uh, uh, good stewards of, of, of the policies and, and, and the resources afforded us. Well, for that reason, the potential liability of unknown claims coming in the door now, if we were to pass this, I, I would be opposed to this item. Is that a motion? There's a request to rehear the application, so I, I, I would guess I would make a motion that the request to, to, or the request to rehear the application be denied. I, I'd second that. A motion and a second to deny the application to rehear. Uh, are there further comment? Questions? All those in favor say aye. Yes vote is a vote to uh, not reconsider the application. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Uh, motion passes four to one. Uh, that's the end of the regular agenda. Is there new business? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think I have a comment from staff. Pardon me. There is no new business from staff. Okay. Um, Just comment. Trustees. Here, Mr. Chairman, I ask a question that is peripheral to the item we just disposed of. Why are churches and commercial institutions exempt? Why were they exempt from paying a connection fee and, and revenue? Why were they treated differently than residential customers? I don't know. I, we, I weren't. That was a policy set in 1977. Uh, and at that time, uh, based, just based upon the reading of the memos and things from that time, the churches were not seen as large water users. The oversized lines were seen more as a way to feed the residential subdivisions that came off of the section line roads and the half section line roads and to uh, provide fire protection. Uh, I, I think the answer to that, is, first of all, policy A established in 77, I don't believe it was the best policy out there. That's why we revised it and we did the policies both and came up with the, the policies of you know, B1 and which we, by the way, had a successful one. Just the item before that was a yes. successful sanitary sewer project that was done, done, done before that. Um, and so we re revised that. I, I, I think the churches were excluded from the, for the same reason that uh, they're excluded from property taxes based because of the, of the charitable na nature of, the, of, the, of their being. I think, uh, as Mr. Keith pointed out, that it was generally seen as a way uh, to accommodate because of the, what was driving it. We would still charge them for the water they use. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We're not you do totally. That. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Under the current policy that we have in place, are those same exemptions still in existence? Under the current policy, we don't pursue a repayment in that nature. Under policy B1 and policy A1, we evaluate the cost of the oversizing of the line and find that the developer is responsible for a certain size line, which will benefit his development or subdivision. And or board, meet minimum requirements. Right. That meet minimum, uh, and that we pay for the oversizing. I'm sorry you hear that comment. Or meet minimum requirements. Okay. For example, he may have a, a be on a section line road, and an 8-inch line may meet his needs, but our minimum requirements on a section line road are 12-inch. Okay. I see. And, and then comment. if we require an 18-inch or 24-inch, then we participate in the oversizing beyond that. We don't pursue percentages of revenues collected thereafter because it, we found that it cost more to track and administrate right. than we were, either we or the developer were receiving in, in, in return. Okay. So the revised policy A1 and B1 was really a whole revamping of it's, that policy, which I think is a much cleaner role. Okay. That's good. Thank you very much. The, the original policies A and B are still available. Um, they would be 
very rarely used. But it, because, frankly, there's a very long term payback, people get very little money. Um, we left them in place because people were comfortable with them. Uh, we can bring you a, a short report about how they're used and whether we should, whether you might consider eliminating the A and B, the original uh, methods, or, or changing them in some way. I'd be happy to take, it'd be good to take a look at it. It's been several years now since we did look at it. Any further questions? Yeah. I had one question about the, I got an email from the, one of the officers at Draper about the condition of the ramps and so forth. And it was my understanding that we'd closed the ramps, period. Yeah, the ramps are closing tomorrow. Okay. That we want to be able to announce it here and issue a press release. Okay. Um, the Draper Lake level is at about 1178. It, it is, uh, Problematic to get a boat in the lake. I think some people are still accomplishing it, but it's not safe to do that. Uh, you have the potential to damage all but the very smallest boat. Right. So, a Draper will be uh, with, mostly without boats for the next 18 months, probably. Okay. Okay. Are there further comments? Citizens, staff, trustees? Hearing none, we stand adjourned. <laughs>